welcome. We're Friday, the fourth week of the Lenten season, and Good Friday is just now two weeks away. Today's Friday Lenten Mass is a clear un, un, indication of future events. In Jerusalem, dark clouds are gathering over the head of Jesus of Nazareth, and the popular teacher and miracle worker um, is starting to be looked at from afar, but being talked about. We don't need him. And so we are going to begin to see um, the rough days are really just ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, our source of life, you know our weakness, and may we reach out with joy to grasp your hand and walk more readily in your ways. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we're looking again at the Gospel of John. It's chapter 7, verses 1 to 2, 10, and then 25 to 30. And the evangelist John now shows us Jesus as threatened with capture and death. While making clear his divine origins, Jesus is well aware of the plot against him. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He had to see, decided not to travel in Judea because some of the Jews were looking for a chance to kill him. The Jewish Feast of Booths drew near once his brothers had gone up to the festival, he too went up, but as if in secret and not for all to see. Some of the people of Jerusalem remarked, Is this not the one they want to kill? Here he is speaking in public and they don't say a word to him. Perhaps even the authorities have decided that this is the Messiah. Still, we know where the man is from. When the Messiah comes, no one is supposed to know his origins. At this Jesus, who was teaching in the temple arena, said, cried out, So you know me, and you know my origins? The truth is, I have not come of myself. I was sent by one who has the right to send, and him you do not know. I know him, because it is from him I come. He sent me. At this they tried to seize him, but no one laid a finger on him, because his hour had not yet come. So we find that uh, first we hear that the, the Jews are about to kill Jesus and then rather than avoiding the dangerous situations, Jesus starts up um, and stands up in the temple, making a show of himself, speaking freely and controversially in front of those gathered around him. Surely he will not uh, be got by the bad guys, but mysteriously no one lays any hands on him. We are simply told that his time had not yet come. All of the tension builds up, and then instead of the terrible climax, we are emotionally preparing for the story's end of now, but now we find there is um, safety. Until the toddlers uh, begin to come to an awareness that this man, the, the longer he lives, the more dangerous he becomes to our faith, to our ways, to our ancestral religion. So we can't allow him to be around too much longer. But the reason why the time had not yet come was because um, if God is going to try to formulate a reality that will then speak to all of the Jewish community, then what does God choose? He chooses that his son will die during the Passover celebration. And if they are smart enough to connect with what happened in Egypt and they were being freed from slavery, then they would begin to see that here now is the Lamb of God whose blood runs out, that that blood um, runs out so that we might be freed from sin or free freed from our slavery to sin. That was the right time. That was the right moment. God the Father, <coughs> if he's leading up to something, he's leading up to the whole Paschal mystery, uh, the Paschal 
Passover supper. And hopefully um, Jesus who, who says, take and eat, this is my body now. Um, take and drink, this is the cup of my blood. Um, then all of a sudden he's speaking about his own death, body to eat, blood to, to drink, um, and thus saying, here's my person, here's my life, eat my person, drink my life, you shall have life within you. So um, this is the important time. And so Jesus cannot be grasped and taken into prison any time before the Passover because then the whole meaning of his life will come into view at least to all believers. When, at what point in, in the church's development did we put all this together? Did the church put all this together? I think the, the disciples put it together very right early on mm -hmm. because of that story of, on the road to Emmaus. You know, and, um, and we have to realize that all of the liturgical celebrations really begin with Easter and they have been developed backwards uh -huh. to the birth of Jesus. Um, so they all start at the resurrection and our celebrations have uh, slowly grown um, to finally include the birth of Jesus. So, But at that time, is it because they chose not to see the connection, as you just said, Father. The, the overall Jewish community. The overall community. Jewish community just didn't want to see the connection. They were glad to get rid of this thorn in their side. So yes. they just sloughed it off. They, they were freed, in other words, from that which would get in their way. And so the, the disciples, you know, um, right away began to meet and they began to break bread. They began to... Um, pass the one cup around um, to share in this meal. And I think that the more they shared in the meal, the more they were being enlightened by God's grace to come understand the depth and the reality of what this meal was being, um, was showing them. Um, so they really s started right away with the scriptures and the meal. And then we know that in Jerusalem it got built up where they were going to synagogue first. And then they were coming to the various homes to, to pass the bread and the cup, and they were doing it around a meal. Um, but then, you know, things began to change. Problems began to come up because um, the poor people were not being invited and the widows were not being invited. Um, and so all of a sudden that meal happening around um, these private homes uh, was changing. And finally they said, we can't do this anymore because the human situation is getting in the way. So if they were going for tri-tip, they weren't going to share their tri-tip with someone who was poor. So, you know, right away the reality of, of the truth of faith begins to wane. Um, but yet that idea of bread and wine and uh, the scriptures, they were linked and the they absolutely, as disciples and new communities, didn't waver from that. And this tradition has come all through those 2,000 years to us. To us. And we carry it forward. Yeah, and we carry it forward. And in fact, maybe to see that, uh, there's a movie um, that's out actually called uh, Mary of Nazareth. And, mm -hmm. and we're going to be showing it in our parish at the local theater on June the 8th. Oh, uh, If you're interested in ticket, uh, call to St. Patrick's office or go on to our online uh, parish uh, website and look about the information. It's not being shown in the regular theaters oh. because uh, the theater it people don't believe they'll make the money they want. Yeah, that figures. So we're Limited renting the theater engagement. and <laughs> also we're hoping to fill the house uh, for people to have that experience of Mary of Nazareth. So come back on Monday. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.